The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. You know, for every single one of us, our highest need ultimately is to make a difference in the world. Every, every human is built with this desire to make a difference. The purpose that all of us have, you know, at the end of your life, it's a little morbid to think about, but when you're at the end of the life and, and maybe if you were to see a, a, your funeral, you know, they're not talking about all the money you made. They're, they're, they're not talking about all the things you invented. They're talking about the lives that you impacted. Jimmy Witcher helps us find our identity and purpose in the kingdom of heaven right here, right now, next on Life Today. And we welcome you right today. I'm James Robinson. My wife Betty and I welcome you. And I like the title of this book. <laughs> and and I, I, it's Kingdom Come. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The kingdom has come. That's right. The king has come. The king is coming. But the king has come. <laughs> and Kingdom Come is actually a confession and a prayer that has been answered because the king came. And he said, uh, repent, change your thinking because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he said, it's in you. It's not of this world, but it's here. And uh, Jimmy Witcher is pastor of Trinity Fellowship out in uh, Amarillo. Jimmy Evans pastored there and they were there together. And uh, Jimmy's at Gateway and he's one of our senior pastors along with uh, Robert, who's the lead senior pastor. We got all these titles, you know, like put... <laughs> You know, everybody, we give you a title. You need one to make you feel better. <laughs> but Jimmy is, is the pastor there, and uh, he really understands this. And I, I was excited when I saw that he put the beauty of the kingdom in a very simple presentation. Because this is not a kingdom theology. The gospel of the kingdom is the gospel. It's the reality. And one of the things I say over and over is Jesus didn't leave us here to get us out of here. And uh, let's, let's elaborate on that a little bit. If you will welcome uh, Jimmy Witcher to Life Today, we're going to talk about it. Would you welcome Jimmy? I'm glad to have you. I can't shake hands. I had some surgery. Exactly. I had some surgery on this hand, and this is just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, covering the galls and, and so forth. I just made that statement uh, that he didn't leave us here to get us out of here. He left us here to to get him in here. Exactly. And he actually re-emphasized that clearly when this bunch, now think about it a minute, Jimmy. He's been with, he's the greatest teacher that ever lived. Mm -hmm. He's had this bunch mm -hmm. and we know the kind of bunches because we've been part of the bunches. <laughs> exactly. Ourselves. And he had them for three years and now he's getting ready to leave and as he's getting ready to ascend, promise him he's coming back, mm -hmm. but they want to know, is now the time you're going to set up the kingdom? <laughs> in other words, I just told you it's at hand. Exactly. It's in you, and we're going to set it up. Mm -hmm. There's a kingdom to come, fellas, but there's a kingdom here, and I want you to be witnesses unto me of the kingdom, and you'll be filled with power. The Holy Spirit, like me that's in you, will not just be resident. He'll be president. He'll be king. The king that's come will be your king. You'll manifest that. Get on with the program. Am I misrepresenting what he was oh saying there? Oh my gosh, there? absolutely not. I mean, Jesus came <laughs> to, to say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He kept saying it over and over again, the kingdom of God's at hand, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here if you will grab a hold of it. You know, you know, we grow up, certainly when I grew up, with the idea that, you know, I get saved and then hopefully I'll get to make it into heaven if I, if I live a good life. You know, that's kind of what I thought when I grew up in, in the church. That's crummy theology. It is terrible <laughs> theology, absolutely. I agree with you. And, and that's the idea because Jesus didn't come just so that we can make it into heaven when we pass. Jesus came that we might have the kingdom of heaven right here, right now, that we, could, yes. that we could experience it, that we could have all the fullness that his father had. You know, he taught his disciples when he was teaching them how to pray. Our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. I mean, he, he wants us to call in his kingdom everywhere we go. That's what he was challenging his disciples to do. And that's what he was telling them to get filled with the Holy Spirit and now go into the world and take the kingdom with you everywhere you go. And the only way that his will can be done on earth is because the kingdom is here that's right. in us because the king is here. He's in us. He made it absolutely clear. It's even necessary for you in this kingdom reality 
for me to leave and send in you, each one of you individually, the same spirit. That's right. Another of the same kind, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. to live in you, to reside in you, which I will be with you everywhere to the ends of the earth. Now go and represent that kingdom. Go and make a kingdom imprint, a kingdom impact on planet earth. That's right. And we can live with the presence of the king, kingdom reality here. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have all the awful things of the kingdom of darkness and deception, principalities and powers of prevailing Absolutely. darkness mm -hmm. everywhere they can take control and deceive and defeat mm -hmm. and divide and destroy. That's what they do. That's in this kingdom, the next kingdom, that reality will not be there. That's right. But the reality of the king and the kingdom is here now. Why do you think it's so important for people to get that? Because it looks like a lot of people don't get it. Well, certainly I didn't get it, you know, and I, I, I realized that, uh, especially as I was raising my kids and just realized that I want them to recognize that their, their role, once they enter into God's kingdom, is to advance his kingdom. And it's so simple. And that's in God's kingdom is where we find his provision. It's where we find his protection. It's where we find his blessing. It's where we find, you know, the, a kingdom has a king. Mm -hmm. and, and we obviously know that God is the king of heaven. And our job as his children is to represent his kingdom here on the earth everywhere that we go. And we, we read the story you were just referencing in Acts, talking about how the Holy Spirit came and empowered his disciples. And sometimes we get this crazy idea that that was just for, you know, kind of the disciples or maybe that was just for the religious folks. But he, he wants every one of us to be empowered with his spirit and be able to carry his kingdom every single where we go. When we're going to school, when we're raising our kids, in our marriages, as we're going to work, every aspect of life is our opportunity to ad advance his kingdom. So, so many grow up thinking it's just within the church right. family, you mm -hmm. know. But as I've come to learn as in my many years here on this earth is that I'm to be that expression of right. what God came to do and what he's done in my heart, and it'll overflow. But I'm to be active. Exactly. Yeah, active and, and a part of everything that God wants to, wants to do on the earth. You know, he, he wants us as his church. If we, if we think of his church, which is the body of believers, all of us, no specific domination or, or uh, label on the door, but all together as his church, he's called us to help advance his kingdom. To, to see his rule and reign advance in every aspect of our society and every aspect of our families, every, everything that we have on the earth. That's why he left us here on the earth. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't for the role of advancing the kingdom, we would just get saved and go to heaven. There would be no reason for us to, uh, to hang about. You know, a, a, a kind of a way to think about it, when we think about kingdom, sometimes we think about citizenship. And it's the idea that, you know, if we are to become citizens, if you will, of the kingdom of heaven, we actually have a translation of our citizenship. We leave this world and we're now citizens of heaven. We, we, we have a passport, if you will, the mark of the Holy Spirit is part of that sign and seal of that passport. But we have the, the kingdom of God within us and we are citizens of that kingdom. That's how we get lost, if you will. We give up our, our rights and claim to this world so that our rights and claim can be in the other. And then we have the responsibilities that come with that, the responsibility of advancing God's kingdom and, uh, and taking that influence, the, uh, the opportunity, the blessing, all the things that come from doing things God's way. I mean, I, it even helps us define what sin is uh, because Jesus obviously died on the cross to, to eliminate all of our sin. So we have aspects of our life where when we do things God's way, when we do things with our finances that are God's way, our marriage that it's God's way, when we work God's way, we take those aspects of our life, we move them in to where we're citizens of heaven and God's blessing, his provision, his protection then comes on those aspects of our life. And then it gives us a platform to work out and to advance his kingdom to those that we come in contact with and work with and go to school with and our kids play ball with. And it's just a way for us to take that empowerment and then expand his, his influence. You know, one of the things that has so come alive in my life is the importance of every member of his body. Mm -hmm. And if everyone watching would understand that the body of Christ is the family, the, the true expression through a family that he desired in creation. He wanted a family. He wanted a people through whom he could bless all the people, all the nations of the world. And he revealed himself after man failed and listened to the deceiver. He then revealed himself in fullness as a father to Israel to bless the nations mm -hmm. through them. He made a covenant with them. All right, later we find out that the Redeemer actually came to Zion, mm -hmm. the Messiah that many are looking for that will come again. Right. He has been here. You know, we had uh, Dennis Prager, who is Jewish, here mm -hmm. with us not long ago. And he really uh, was, was just really wonderful to be with because he loves the, the truth of God. He mm -hmm. wants people to know the freedom God wants for everybody. But he said, one of the things I'm going to ask the Messiah when he comes is, 
have you been here before? <laughs> and that, that so says I'm a seeker. Yeah. And people ask me, you know, well, did you talk to Dennis about Jesus? And I said, well, first I wanted him to see Jesus right. in me, in us. For sure. And of course, the, the relationship was great. This is the way we should live. Okay, I believe if we recognize how God left us here, that we are members of this body, mm -hmm. of his family, of the church. And we've all been uniquely designed, uniquely gifted, mm -hmm. with great diversity, distinctives exactly. that are great and important. And if we will release all the gifting that God's placed in us, mm -hmm. and we lose it for his purpose, we're going to begin to make a kingdom impact. And now you, you, you have to. You, Tim, I want you to pray with me about this. What if all of the incredibly gifted entrepreneur minds, exactly. the people that have created enormous wealth and met tremendous needs, mm -hmm. their greatest gift is what Jesus said is the greatest gift, and that's the gift of a servant. Mm -hmm. When you're a servant, that's the greatest gift you can make. These successful people, I don't care whether they're in retail to sell a mm -hmm. product, something you need or desire or that's important, or even like Bezos has done to deliver to us as we get older, Betty can shop <laughs> and she doesn't even have to go to Walmart. Right exactly. <laughs> Sam Walton told me before he died, I started Walmart wanting people that didn't have a lot mm -hmm. to be able to go and see everything they could imagine and be able to afford it. And I said, Sam, that's a servant. He said, yeah, and that man, David Glass, that really built Walmart, he said, that's the greatest servant on the planet. Mm -hmm. He's just a servant. And yeah. I said, see, that's a servant heart. He wanted to do something. I believe Bezos makes it possible for her to shop and all the things she needs. It'll be delivered in 12 or 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing what God does through somebody that's yielded. What if, what if all these gifted people that's realize, right. not only do we do a service and we get wealth, what if they begin to pray? How do we, with our God-given genius and ability mm -hmm. to create and meet needs. What if we started focusing on the poor? What if we started focusing on the people with needs that are overlooked? And we started reaching out with love and our resources and not turning it over to Pharaoh. Exactly. By just giving Pharaoh our taxes and rendering unto Caesar. Mm -hmm. Because the New Testament Christians you just talked about in the book of Acts, they were in trouble because they preached another king other than Caesar. Exactly they were preaching the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And if we would begin to live that and preach that, and all these leaders and gifted people would begin suddenly look through the eyes of the king and see the least of these and say, let's get involved with them. Mm -hmm. What if all these people had been so blessed showed them that they loved them with all their heart and wanted everything. the best for them because that's what the king wants? Absolutely. Does this make sense? Oh my gosh, does, this, does this sound like kingdom theology? Absolutely. I need to know. Absolutely. Help me out because you can correct <laughs> no, it would change everything. You know, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it to the full. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you may have life and have it to the full. And so when we live our life, you know, every gifting that we have, these entrepreneurs that you're talking about, those are gifts that came from God. Every gift that we have, every talent that we have, every ability comes from the Father. Absolutely. And, and for when, His kingdom. For purpose. His kingdom. And that's blessing people. Exactly. And so when we embrace that and recognize, well, this isn't just for me. I've, I've got a responsibility. I've got, I've got a kingdom here. I've got a citizen and a responsibility that comes. God has given me these blessings and it's for to me to apply those and see his kingdom advance and, and take the power of the Holy Spirit and apply that creatively in every aspect that God gives us. You know, one of, one of the things that is, is so pervasive in our society is this idea that we have to have, you know, kick, take your religious self. You can be religious if you want, but kind of keep that keep that on the weekend. That's, that's what you do on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And 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 what the, that, that kind of, may, maybe that would call that church theology versus kingdom theology. You go, you go on the weekend. But what God wants is us to embrace the kingdom, the fullness, because he came not just that we would be able to, you know, do good and get our family to church on Sunday morning, but that we would take his Holy Spirit to work. We would take it to school. We would take it to every aspect of life and say, okay, how do you want us to advance your kingdom as an ambassador, literally as a son of the king, as a daughter of the king, as an ambassador for Christ? How do I take your kingdom and how do I advance it on this earth? What are you calling me to do? You know, for every single one of us, our highest need ultimately is to make a difference in the world. Every, every human is built with this desire to make a difference. And you make a difference in the world by making a difference in somebody's life. Exactly right. It's all about people. You know, Jesus said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the purpose of life. It's one of the things we talk about, the, the purpose that all of us have. You know, at the end of your life, it's a little morbid to think about, but when you're at the end of the life, and, and maybe if you were to see a, a, your funeral, 
you know, they're not talking about all the money you made. They're, they're, they're not talking about all the things you invented. They're talking about the lives that you impacted. And, and that's when we realize that the kingdom is about the lives that we impact and how we make a difference in the world. Well, and it shouldn't depend on, because a lot of people say, well, how do I live that kingdom life? Because mm -hmm. I look around me and there's not any hope out there. Yeah. And there's trials I'm going through, you know, things you run into, tragedies and all that. But it's not, it's not, it's kingdom life is so much more mm -hmm. than that. It should inspire us as Christians to want to be able to go out there and make a difference and show them what kingdom life looks like. It, exactly. it doesn't mean you won't have a trial yeah. or a challenge Just or an enemy. You will. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be more than a conqueror. You've got somebody to conquer, That's right. somebody to overcome. Mm -hmm. You become overcomers in mm -hmm. this life is what God wants. That is kingdom life. That's kingdom reality. That's right. And it's for everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so you wrote the book. It's, it's a, probably from a series of messages that you taught. And you put them together, right? I actually did it the other way around. I actually wrote the book and then pulled the messages out of it. So <laughs> well, you, went the other way around. you learned a great lesson that Robert Morris learned because he taught the blessed life right here on Life Today yes, before he met a church. Absolutely. And then he went out and taught it to the church. So <laughs> you wrote the book and now you're teaching it. And the thing that I see is that anybody ought to be able to grasp it. Do you believe it's important? Not just that somebody grasps the kingdom reality, but that kingdom reality grasps them Absolutely. and carries them with purpose. Well, I, I actually believe it is our ultimate purpose in life is to live in the kingdom of God and to fulfill the call of God in our life that is only found within the kingdom of God. So it is, it is I don't think it's important. I think it's everything. I think it's the ultimate uh, purpose. Other than just loving God and, and giving our life to Him, it's everything that He has called us to do. Every joy, every blessing, every success, all of His provision is all found when we cooperate with God and we live in His kingdom doing what it is that He's called us to do, empowered by His Spirit, doing what He's called us to do. That's where it's all found. That's where all the joy Comes we from. could actually have a whole lot of what's in the kingdom to come right here in the kingdom that <laughs> that's right come. because the same king that's there forever no enemy no darkness no deception no satan but that king is here the peace that he offers the power the freedom that he offers that if you abide in him you'll know the truth he is mm -hmm. the truth and the truth will set us free it is his truth that sets us free it is his truth essential to keep us free. That's right. And to share that freedom. That's kingdom living. Absolutely. Would you all say thanks to Pastor Jimmy Witcher for sharing this? This is, and I'll just tell you right now, this is such a, a beautiful and simple understanding of the gospel of the king. You know, Jimmy, one of the things that has thrilled Betty and me mm -hmm. is when we see a need yeah. that love meets, mm -hmm. and you look out here at people who have come to understand that we can make a positive kingdom effect, and they do it. Let me just say this to you. This is the last week now. We're kind of coming toward the end of the year, but this is the last week where we're talking about uh, our mission feeding infants to 400,000 children. The missionaries have found where there's a serious malnutrition situation. Uh, it's a crisis. And we're asking you right now to help us take care of these precious, precious children because malnutrition is a killer. It's a greater killer than any disease you could ever name or think of. And it's a horrible death. It's heartbreaking. It has a perfect cure. You are the one who delivers this miracle, this perfect cure. Ask God to use you to do it and become a miracle answer for many, many who need the miracle and answered prayer. I am a mother's worst nightmare. I thrive on the pain of children. I do not discriminate and I show no mercy. You look into the eyes of a child who's seriously malnourished and there's just nothing. It's like somebody just turned the light off. You won't see me coming, but you will soon hear me in your children's cries. My touch brings bloated stomachs, thinning hair that changes color, painful skin disorders, and tiny bodies so thin and frail they appear as living skeletons. And to see this little helpless one with the skin literally peeling off his arms and his legs was such a horrifying sight. I am slow 
but sure. My name is malnutrition, and my legacy is death. I heard someone on the news one day make a comment about the devastating deaths of children in some countries in Africa, and yet the reporters suggested that perhaps the mothers there were more accustomed to that because it's very much part of their life. I've seen with my own eyes what I knew in my gut. No mother will ever become accustomed to burying a child. The thing that really has blown me away the most, all of this is reversible. I love to see that beautiful smile. <laughs> Sheila, I love you. Thank you for going all over the world with life outreach, putting God's arms around the precious and the suffering. I want all of you to listen real close now. Just please hear me. Betty and I traveled all those places for 20 to 25 years, and we marched into hell, you might say, for a heavenly cause until Betty did experience a potentially life-changing experience of being paralyzed uh, from being hurt where there are no roads and banged around. And so we know what it is, and Sheila, you're just such a blessing. When you look at this horrible killer, and uh, I can't help but think of all the little children we watch die, sometimes in their mother's arms. I remember one of them where Betty and I were in Luanda, Angola, and we were watching them try to pump. They didn't have an oxygen machine. They didn't have oxygen. They had a little rubber tube, and they were squeezing it, trying to get oxygen on a baby that wasn't breathing. And we watched that little baby take his last breath, and nothing could save it. And we watched the mother in the hall, and you and Ann Pretorius, Betty, trying to comfort this mother. And we appealed to you, and we said, we can save these children. They're literally dying by the millions. Now, now you know this. This is not an exaggeration. The reports have come back to us from the African countries that we save between 14 and 15 million children's lives. When we say we, that's you. Somebody just like you, you did that. Now, now listen to me. When we saw, this is one of the most famous pictures that's ever been taken in history. It was Lady Di, Princess Diana, holding a little African child in her arms, and that little baby was the healthiest, prettiest little baby any mom would want to take home. She was standing in front of that orphanage where those babies were dying and we watched them. And we said to you, the viewers, we can save those children. And here's Princess Di holding one of the babies, love for someone like you saved. And not only that one, but millions. Because somebody said, I'll be the miracle. I'll be the answer to prayer. That's what we're asking you to do this last week of mission feeding right now. We're asking you to make the greatest gift you can possibly make. If you could give $1,000 or $10,000, think about it. With $1,000, we can feed 100 children, 100 children the next month. Let me break it down more simply. For $30, $50, or $100, we can feed 3, 5, or 10 children for the next month. I don't know what you can do, but would you be a miracle for as many children as possible? Would you right now? Father, please. Move people to get your arms of love around those that are so precious. Give them life in Jesus' name. Would you do that right now, please? Would you go get your bank card to get a check and make that check to life? Get your bank card, use it like a check, please. Go online right now. It's so easy to do it that way. Or you can dial that number. It's a prayer line and make the gift. If you made it, call us and tell us what you're sending in. Because in this last week, we really need to hear from you. We're going to need a lot of help. We got 400,000 precious little malnourished lives that you can change with love. We have some gifts to send you to say thank you. But you're going to be given the greatest gift. You're going to be giving life. All because of love. God's love. Thank you so much for doing it. Mission Feeding began with a promise to be there in times of crisis for thousands of hurting and hungry children in their time of need. Now more than ever, we need your help to save lives by feeding and caring for children across the continent of Africa. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, 
we urgently need to replenish our supplies to reach the 400,000 children who are counting on us. Your gift of love can be the miracle answer to a desperate mother's prayer. Call now with your life-saving gift of 30, 50, or $100 that will help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. With your gift, we'll send you the Altered Worship CD by Anthony Evans. This powerful full-length album includes unique versions of some of today's most cherished worship songs that are sure to uplift and inspire you. With your gift of $100 or more, please request a filled with faith and joy travel mug set. These 12 ounce mugs are crafted with large handles, double layered insulation, and vacuum sealed lids to prevent spills. Each mug includes a message to remind you of God's blessings and faithfulness. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our commemorative bronze sculpture, Safe in the Shepherd's Arms. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. You know, I'm really believing God is not only hearing our prayers here, but the prayers of many mothers. And you're going to be the miracle. Here we are celebrating the greatest love gift ever, Jesus, in the Christmas season. And, we, and we've really been praying, Betty, for the greatest year-end gifts from all of our supporters that we've ever witnessed. Uh, we've actually had some people say they wouldn't help us anymore because I pray for our nation's leaders and pray with them. And always download the truth. I've done this for forever, for 40 years steady. I just, I just want to tell people the truth and love them. Not only pray for them, but with them. But some people say, would you pray with them? I want to. Oh, God. I'm trying to help our leaders because I love you. I love your children, your grandchildren. Love your family. I love the least of these. I love you, too. We really need to hear from all of you. We're sending you Anthony Evans' incredible CD and uh, other gifts. But if you'd like to have kingdom come, understand it. What a great way to end the year and start a new year, making a kingdom impact. Thank you so much for your help. Would all of you here in the audience thank Jimmy Witcher for his incredible blessing for the gift. Thank you, Jimmy, for being a blessing in Amarillo. Thank you for being a blessing to us and all our viewers. Thank you, guys. All All right. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Remember, special year in gifts. Thank you for what you do. Thanks for your love. Life Today, James and Betty help you celebrate Christmas with special music from Sheila Walsh, Four Hymns, Mark Harris, Anthony Evans, and more. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.